Okay, but do I press the record button before we play or after we play? Do it both to me, sure. Do it both times? Okay. So it says stop recording now. I'll press it. And then when we're done, I'll press no! the No! Oh, no! I am a horrible person. And that is funny for one of us. <laughs> and that that doesn't stop me, unfortunately. Hello, and welcome to Pack Tactics Season 3. This is a homebrew Wait. Dungeons & Dragons campaign. We're doing 5th edition, and yet we have a significant amount of Spelljammer content and a bunch of third-party stuff and a whole ton of homebrew because buttons. All the buttons. Mm. My name Crack, is Cash. You, re you remember why I have to ask? We are both recording and streaming, right? Uh, well, I hope so because I'm getting responses from LFA in the chat for my comments. So I'm assuming that we're currently streaming. They might just be psychic. They might be watching a pre-recorded episode and still typing in chat. Or you know, maybe they're watching TV or something. I don't know. But in any case, all things considered, my name is Crash. I will be your DM for the evening. Tonight I'm joined by a bunch of awesome people. LFA and Archbeth are hanging out in various chats, which is incredibly awesome. We've also got Ellie, Eo, Jen, Cindy. Matt will be joining us soon. He is uh, fulfilling parental duties, as one must do. And what happened last week? We fought, a, I believe, what we just decided to call a no. And then we went back to Reach to talk to Vim. Am I getting their name right? The politician? Sniv. Sniv. We talked to Sniv. Sniv, who's always finding new ways of making us angry. And I thought it was a good conversation. I also have a wisdom of eight, which means I kind of have an insight of no. <laughs> so then Sniv, quote unquote, gave us permission to take a vacation and hinted at a spot to go, which we're guessing is where the Myconids were because that was a big part of our conversation is, hey, where did you send the Myconids? I like them. So now we got a beach episode. <laughs> and yes, I seem to give Sniv a new name every time I try to remember their name. <laughs> I, I love this. I'm, I'm looking forward to the names getting further and further away from Sniv each time. <laughs> Eventually, none of the right letters are used. Extra syllables are added. <laughs> it's, well, tonight's was Vim, so I expect the rest of them to just be text editors. <laughs> you know, next, next week is Emacs. Next time it's going to be Sublime Text, and then it's going to be VS Code. What about text edit? There's also uh, Ars Magica forms. Mm. Oh, that's true. That's true. I am here for all of this, by the way. I I look forward to all of this. This is, this is and we, can, we could call them Vigor next time. <laughs> V-I-G-O-R, Vigor. Vim and Vigor. LFA is saying final form of Sniv is Xbox. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. My, that's a good one. My favorite Xbox, and this is coming from someone who has not played any Xbox games ever in the history of the console franchise or whatever. The Xbox One X was glorious yes. because when you wrote it out and turned it into an acronym, the acronym was Xbox. <laughs> yep. I love that. You don't get that from the PS insert number here. <sighs> All right. Well, you've had a long rest and All you right. are off on a well-deserved vacation, where vacation is in quotes, because technically you're kind of on a, a self-imposed mission to find out if the Myconids in Warforged are okay. <laughs> in my head canon, Neri is whistling that tune as the Red <laughs> Star slowly descends from the moon to the Circulean atmosphere. <laughs> and it is in fact descending. You are facing the correct way. Up is up by planet direction. Down is down by planet direction. And you just, at the speed that the ship can move safely without taking impact damage, slowly descending into the atmosphere. Hey, guys, you want to know something cool? What okay. What are you going to do? We're going to be on an actual planet soon. Instead of a, wait, I thought the moon was a planet. The moon is a satellite. This is a, the circulus is a planet. Oh, okay. They're different. The ring world, not a planet. That turtle, not a planet. Circulus, finally, a planet. Okay. I'm going to miss moon gravity. That's true. It was my understanding that you spent most of your lives on this planet. Right. So, I mean... It's just going been a while. Going back is a little 
you know, disappointing. Chroma and I deal in projectiles, and projectiles go really far on the moon. Uh huh. Yeah, I noticed it's that. It's great. With that battle we did, you know. Yeah. You can throw that hammer pretty far. Which is good, because minimum safe distance. Well, yeah. it works. I mean, nobody yeah, It's one of those it. times I mean, you didn't throw the hammer died. very far at all. Yeah, you know. Less than 30 feet. I mean, if by work, do you mean stunned us to. Well, it didn't stun I mean, me. Didn't it stun all of effective. us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. I will note for the audience that Chroma and Zax are siblings. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's set her down near the uh, near the target area. Okay. I got to remember to turn all my spells off. Well, you were able to get some direction from the. Cobalt inventors and artificers. Uh, some of them were both, which was slightly disturbing. You turned down all, all offers for gopher-based space sh- suits. <laughs> Apparently, there was one particular cobalt that was really into them. It wasn't a gopher that you climbed into. It was multiple gophers that were meant to uh, stack themselves in a formation around you. That does <laughs> not seem vacuum safe. It well, is if that's you had enough glue. Safe. No, 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 no. Um, Crash, can I ask a technical question? You might get a non-technical yeah. answer, but sure. No, this is this is purely a this is a weird question, but I, please understand why I'm asking. Does piloting the ship take away my ability to cast spells, or does it use up all my spell slots? As it's written in the original Spelljammer rules, it uses up all of your spell slots. Okay. So I can still use Prestidigitation? Yes. Okay. Which is the only cantrip that I have. <laughs> I, I think part of it is because cantrips weren't a thing in 2nd edition a thing when Spelljammer came out. Uh, and they've sense. never revised it since. They've revised um, multiple <clears throat> of the creatures... Like the Neogi, mm-hmm. that's fifth edition. I had to convert nothing. The GIF, I had to convert nothing. Um, but for that, it was uh well we but we didn't know what that was, so you get it anyway. All right. Um, with that okay. said, I was but I, I wanted to make sure I, I didn't want to I yeah. didn't want to be using prestidigitation if I didn't get it. Well, you can't overuse a cantrip. Right. Okay. Right. That's Especially a bold face lie. <laughs> That's a bold face lie because I remember Nepo and Glitter. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it can be yeah. overused, mm-hmm. but that is a matter of opinion. Are you all glad I don't have prestidigitation? <laughs> That's probably good. You don't need it. You have like all those little turret things that talk to you. Yeah. And... I'll just wait for the first time Chroma gets bloody. Oh. Not bloodied, bloody. <laughs> you're gonna okay. hit something and it's gonna spray and chroma's gonna go press a digit i didn't learn that <laughs> chroma with precipitation would pretty much have like an air compressor or a wet dry vac or combination <laughs> air compressor wet dry vac so you can either suck in all of the contaminants or you hook up like a paint nozzle to it and have it go the other way <laughs> Move the I feel like here, prestidigitation would be like an endless supply of really mostly useless and specific things from her belt, like magical wet wipes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So I'm thinking about a very small mega maid. <laughs> Very small wet wipes, a vial that's actually a decanter of endless glitter. There you go. Oh no, no, that is the opposite of a wet wipe. That is the anti wet wipe. That's, that's why you need. That's why you need all no. the wet wipes. That, that, that negates so all water. uses of wet wipe afterwards. You just end up with glittery wet wipes, and the glitter is still in the original location. Um, By the okay, way, my yeah. upstairs neighbor. It is. It is after nine o'clock at night. On a weeknight, and my upstairs neighbor is running a vacuum. Can you hear that over my microphone? Nope. We cannot. Nope. Okay. Can you hear the, the fireworks that are going off? Nope. No. In my neighborhood. All right. We actually don't even hear your dogs, which might mean... There was a careful. firework. Oh, ah, I heard that one. Heard that. So, I really enjoy our conversations. 
With mm-hmm. that said, digression aside, let's get back to what I was trying to say about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yes. Give or take. Uh, you were given some very rough directions of, okay, so you know that island the size of Australia that's called the Orklands go sort of to the south and east of it towards the center of the inner sea and you'll find a small island there that's got a small port and that's where we've been aiming to which your appropriate question would be okay so uh what's in australia but they they figure it out a mammal it's a mammal oh yeah i've heard of them i hear they have pouches and they're venomous yeah yeah and sometimes they fall out of trees on you true I, I can verify this as a ranger. And sometimes <laughs> sometimes they swoop at you. There's a whole season for it. Why would they make a season of that? Well, there's a season of The Witch. Huh. We were okay. on topic for like a whole 30 seconds. Cobalts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, no, no, no. My question would be aiming? It's true. Hey, I can well, aim. Well, here's the thing. Up until basically yesterday... There was one ship available. It was the Red Star. And that's your ship. And they weren't going to take that from you. But they needed a way to get individuals from the moon down to the surface. Or up to the surface. It's a matter of perspective. Now, teleportation magic could be a thing. But the other artificers and inventors wanted some practice. I feel like this is going somewhere I'm not sure i like you'd be surprised how many times that was said by the people who were being exiled from the moon i don't want to know how they got them down here i do ballistic trajectories with parachutes oh wow i hope there was at least proper heat shielding in most cases it's believed that the heat shielding stayed intact okay so i aim for the splatter mark there is not a fact a splatter mark yeah warforged wouldn't Oh, but the mic on it. Yeah. Right. Well, let's go check on them, see if they okay and need any help. And after that, we'll come back and I'll kill Sniv with my stick. I'll fly down and see what's, what's actually there. Okay, well, when you find the island, at first you're thinking, this can't be it. There's obviously a lot more beings on this island than the ones that have been exiled from the moon. But... It, it's a fairly large island. It's not the size of like of Australia, maybe closer to Tasmania. It, it's a decent-sized island, and it does have a very noticeable, somewhat sprawling city. Kind of small. I mean, you, you've seen De Perfecta. It's mm-hmm. more Coomridge Keep-sized in, in regards to city size. Um, but it is bustling. It has a working port. There are ships that are obviously coming and going. And, if I wanted to settle down. Well, as your ship is not really designed for water landings, settling down at the docks would probably not be wise. However, um, in an area outside, like the, there is a noticeable city wall that seems to have been <coughs> mostly ignored. So there's actually more buildings on the outside of the wall than on the inside of the wall. Well, in one particular area on the outside of the wall, there is an, a lot of large structures and smaller structures too, and a few craters, and a bunch of areas that look like landing pads. All right, great. So I don't have Zax go out and say, attention city dwellers, chop down some trees. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And instead I will find a landing pad and sit down on it. (laughs) Okay, so you sit down on a landing pad, and uh, there's a bunch of people that are there, most of them appear to be human. There's a few gnomes and dwarves, uh, but the vast majority of them are humans. And one of the humans comes up to the hatch, and they're wiping their hands off on a greasy rag. You're assuming Hello? they're you're assuming they're wiping their hands off, but they might in fact be moving grease from the rag onto their hands. It's that everyone here looks like they've been working on something that requires a lot of grease and oil and stuff. Yeah. Uh. You can't park here, I think. But we did. It's clearly possible. I mean, they are. <laughs> I'm just going to let these two deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as, as the DM, 
I am much more thrilled than this NPC is. <laughs> As the DM, I am enjoying this and I am here for this moment. As an NPC, this particular individual just looks at you for a moment and the gears that he has not been working on, the ones inside his head, slowly turn. There's a bit of a grinding sound. A few of the spokes bend in ways that they shouldn't. Tick, 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 tick. I mean, uh, the boss uh, the boss might not like that you parked here. It's, we're supposed to put our spaceship here. Well, where's your, your spaceship, spaceship? Uh, Well, we haven't built it yet. We're, well, then we're... we'll just sort of uh, keep the space from having other spaceships land on it until yours is done. How about that? <laughs> Give me a per- yeah, uh, we can come back and move check. it. <laughs> we can come back and move it if uh, we need to. All right. Also, okay. Is, um... this is the greatest interaction <laughs> in the history of the I'm, game. <laughs> I'm proficient in persuasion. Can I help with this check? You, I, if yes, please you do. can definitely help, but that what that means is Zax gets to roll twice and take the higher number. Okay. Uh, I have a minus one to persuasion. So. I'm okay with this. Five. Okay. So I have. But I'm still having um, Zach do the rolling because I give it yeah, and I take it away. You are. All right. So my first roll was an eleven minus one for a ten. Should I roll again? Yes. Yes. Okay. Second roll is a nine minus one for an eight. <laughs> so you got a ten. Yeah. All right. Well, I am going to do a counter roll on this individual's part. (laughs) And that's a five. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'm not doing any modifier for them. Oh, my gosh. That's so unlikely. That's a straight 10 across the board. So, uh, yeah, I I guess that checks out. Yeah, I mean, we're providing a service, you know. Just tell us (laughs) when you need it moved and we'll uh, get out of your way. (laughs) I Sure. That I guess that sounds like a plan. So no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I have a wisdom. But I have a plus five wisdom. I am not going to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the DM might ask after the game is done. Mm. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you right now uh, what I was going to say, and I'm not going to say. So, how much do we get for making sure no one else parks here? <laughs> <laughs> Zax wouldn't think of that, really. <laughs> you know? This NPC wouldn't have an answer. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a parking space. Now, where do we go? Uh, we ask where the Myconid section is in the city. Oh, okay. I think this oh, you're going to have to wait for the DM to open up his map. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot. Mm-hmm. Actually, the DM did have his map open, and then Windows said there was an update. Oh. Oh. That I know of, the only thing that changed was it replaced my old Edge browser that I never use for a new Edge browser that I will never use. That you will never (laughs) use. It opened it up for me once. I had no say in it. It forced me to go through the configuration options, which I will never care about. And then I was able to close it and remove it from my dock. And I'm much happier for it. Uh, the the Maconids? You mean the 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 people with the the big the mushroom people? Yeah. Oh, they're all in Mushton. Where is that? Oh, over that way. Huh. How far um, over that way? Um. We'll work it out. So you keep going that way, uh-huh. and then you keep going that way, and when you think you haven't gone far enough, you keep going that way. And then when you think you've gone Is too far... Is it in the city or out of the city? Yes. Huh. I mean, uh... well, it, it depends. It's It's on this side of the wall, and there are some people who think that this isn't in the city because we're on the outside of the wall. But no one's really cared about what side of the wall you're on. Well, most of us don't care what side of the wall you're on for the, like the past four years or so. Okay. Ba- so... Basically, you're going to go through a lot of fields, and that means you'll be close-ish. Okay. All right. That doesn't sound too bad. But there's a lot of factories between here and there. Uh, factories? If you're looking at the map I shared with you, you landed close to where there's a number two on the map. Okay. Okay. Mushroom is where the number ten is. All right. Right, you're well, going to walk halfway around the city. Well, okay. I forgot walking. we don't. I forgot we don't have a flying carpet anymore. I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, you've got a spaceship, but you're assuming you're going to find a place to land in an open field. Yeah. On spindly little legs that are going to sink down into that nice soil that's been tilled. Yeah. And then you won't mm. need the ladder to get out anymore. Right. All and right. Let's just. Fine. Let's just start walking. 
What's okay. what's the light gray part at the bottom? Those are fields. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, right. I don't want to land in those. Okay. Um, so JR makes a comment about how those feet were made for walking, and that is what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> they do not get the joke. And it takes you several hours to navigate through. There are some major roads, but they seem to be more along the lines of taking people into the heart of the city or away from the heart of the city, as opposed to walking around the outskirts of the city. So there's a bunch of alleyways and not everything's a straight line. I'll ask for one survival check to see if you get... I thought Neri makes it. (laughs) What, the ranger? (laughs) Yeah. Next you're going to tell me the wizard should make the arcana checks. Uh, Dirty 20. (laughs) Or me. I'm proficient. Fair. I think. Okay, so you very easily navigate. The, the only downside is it takes you a while, but you very easily navigate by looking at the sun and how it's setting very quickly compared to, you know, the amount of distance you're traveling. But you are able to get through the fields by nightfall. And as you're going ah. through the fields, you start to see various myconids <gasps> popping up. Oh. Hello! Well, there they are. I wave. One of them weighs back to you. Okay, if I remember right, these guys can't talk unless we get close enough to them. So I'm going to gently approach and say, are you the guys that were on the moon till recently? We are. Hi, um, Sniff said that um, he sent you all down here because it would be safer than up there with the bad nope things that pray to gods with um incomprehensible names is that true did you come down here because it was safer those are more words than were used when we were sent here oh but we do like it oh good that's there good. is a lot more compost okay good when oh, you heard that sniff kicked you out we just wanted to make sure you were doing well Especially when we heard how they kicked you out. We have found our living conditions are better than when we were on Mortofu. Lots of room to expand without falling off of a giant space turtle. I can see where that would have advantages. All right, so uh, you're good? We are good. Is Button doing all right? Oh, you have met Button. Of course you have met Button. Button, at one point, figured out how to launch themselves out of a catapult to say hi to us. So yes, we They're met very Button. inventive! That they are. I have not seen Button yet this evening. I imagine they are having another adventure. Like they do. Like they do. By any chance, would you know where the Warforged are? They are somewhat scattered. They are? Why are they scattered? They have different jobs and responsibility. Many, I guess they... many have taken up residence in Forge Town. They do enjoy the machinery and its uses. Oh, the means of reproduction. Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Hi, Matt. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can hear you. Can hear, hear us. Can hear us. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. We have made our way to Circulus. We have landed on near a new city, and we have made our way to the Myconids, who are telling us where the Warforged are. Okay. Is it the Flotsam City map that I saw earlier? It yes. most certainly it is. is. Yes. Okay. Many of the Warforged have found jobs for themselves in the Ogmanite Enclave as well. Where they is that? Pa- it is closer to the heart of the city, near the docks, and immigration. Huh. Okay. Will you be staying? Um, what time is it? Not for very long. Ah, then, well, it it's just after sunset. No, I think we'll be okay. Then you will not need to visit immigration. It is only for those who are looking for a home. Mm. Hmm, okay. If you follow this road, and this particular Mycon points to a road that you walked across to get here, but it wasn't going in the direction that you wanted to go in, so you didn't really think too much about it. It is leading towards a gate off in the distance in the wall. If you walk along this road, it will take you through the merchant district, and eventually you will encounter the Ogmanite Enclave. It is very chaotic. It's much nicer out here. 
in the field. Chaotic Aquanite Enclave. That sounds like a neat place. Hmm. I bet I know what sort of thing's going on there. You might find Button there, to be honest. Uh, okay, that kind of makes sense, considering. Yeah, the and rule is you'll find Button things. where they're not supposed to be. Right. They're probably inventing things, or finding things out. If we, run we imagine books, that both to... are possible at the same time. Right. See that. <laughs> if, if we run into Button, do you want us to like tell him to come back, or is he good where he's at? Okay. I don't think he listens. Yeah. He definitively does not. The last time we were able to get them to stay, we had to give him some rope and a book of knots. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. Yes, Button has remembered many of those knots. I am very sorry. It wasn't. We didn't plan it. That was somebody else. Um, really. That was a mind flare. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said stuff. <laughs> the worst harm the mind flayer had, has done to this campaign was teaching a child myconid about knots. <laughs> <laughs> and this is glorious, and I am here for this. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, some we'll some mind be. flayers are shaped like friends. We'll leave you be. Thank you for the directions. Good to see you are in a good place. Yes. It is good to be in a good place. The trip is not recommended. Yeah. Uh, I that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah unfortunate. Yeah, sorry. I'll, I have the words about the person who pranks me. The inventors are an experience. That's good. We noticed. It. Ah, okay. Anyway. Anyway, I'm assuming that at this point you awkwardly say your goodbyes and head down the road. And head down the road, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, Zenosha's happy. She... <laughs> As you're heading down the road, you do pass a large cylinder that is not in the middle of the road. It's over to the side. One end of the cylinder is embedded firmly in the ground and it is leaning at an angle. Not a 45 degree angle. More like 15 to 20 degree angle, so it's almost upright, but enough to see that it's not upright. Hmm. Someone's and sticking a Reliant Robin through here. It. I also don't know what that means. I don't uh, either. <laughs> it also has a hatch that has been left open. A fairly large hatch. A Even a large sized creature would be able to fit through the hatch, although Ooh. the cylinder might be a little cramped for a large creature. And... There is a large expanse of fabric that is held to the top end of the cylinder by a bunch of ropes. Let's go look. Hmm, may as if, well. If you want. I mean, it looks like someone just built that thing on unsteady foundation and it's starting to tilt. I wonder what it's for. Like, why would you need that? Okay, when you go up to take a look at it, you see that the inside has the, the bottom portion lined with chairs. Inventors. And each of the chairs is attached to the wall with a, a single point. And if you go and push on the chair, it sort of rocks back and forth a little bit. Oh, the inventors. Each one also has a large red button on an armrest. There, there, there's different straps for securing oneself to the chair. And there's a large red button on each armrest. I with... press a button. An arm comes out of the shoulder of the chair and comes down and hits empty space right about where one's shoulder would be if they were sitting in the chair. And you hear a robotic voice say, there, 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 there. Uh, the inventors. Further inspection of the large red button shows that it has text next to it that says, if panicking, press this button. Hmm. Why were they panicking? Because this is how they got down from the moon. You hear a voice saying, there, 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 huh. there, 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 there. I press the button again. There, there. It's not coming from the chair that you're at. Huh. Oh. Where? JR is sitting in one of the other chairs pressing the button over and over again. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. I mean, that makes it's sense. It's a chair with they a like button. Chairs. What do you expect? <laughs> JR likes they chairs do. and buttons, so, okay. He, he, he is they a, do. Uh, a man of simple tastes. <laughs> Or an androgynous robot of simple taste. <laughs> okay. This button does not appear to provide much comfort. Yeah, the inventors. They try. There's also a very strange voice. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Okay. You continue down the road. It takes you a good 
30 minutes of walking at a decent pace to get to the gate. The gate does not have any guards. It looks like there was a spot where there might have been large doors and maybe even a portocollis. That's long gone. The wall itself is under a lot of disrepair. There's some spots where it looks like some stones were put back in place or something fell over and they were like, yeah, we could sort of push it up. That's good enough. Just get this out of the way. But it doesn't look like this is something that's meant to be used for any actual fortification. I don't have a whole lot of kobolds in the city, do they? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, the invent- the inventors are probably running around here somewhere. Now, hmm. the inventors probably are uh, still up where they On usually the are. I don't think they came down in that thing. Oh, uh, all right. All right, let's keep going. Okay, it takes Maybe you... Maybe we can offer our services later. It takes you some more time to get through the merchant district. You had further to go to get through the merchant district than through the fields based on your angle from where you were going before. Uh, although the roads are better here, they are definitely paved. They're definitely well maintained. Uh, the shops are for the most part closed at this time of night. Every now and then you see one that's still open, but it's very rare. And most of the ones that have the lights on have signs that say they're closed and someone in there is like counting coins or something. The shops are a very wide variety. There's some that sell basic goods. There's some that advertise expensive, rare, magical items. Basically, if it's portable enough to bring to this part of the city and it can be bought or sold, there is a shop here for it. Wow. This would be really neat if I had money. I keep forgetting that that's a thing that probably should get brought places should we be asking for a salary um we did bring the moon back we did but they also blamed us for the moon leaving yeah it's kind of complex i don't know i don't see sniv wanting to give out salaries the moon going away was before my time yeah yeah oh you should get paid i would share (laughs) oh maybe after a purchase from this store There's a store that just sells furniture that you're right next to. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) What is a recliner? It's a type of chair. It has a lever. We'll tell you about it later. It leans back. It's neat. We'll tell you about it later. Oh, sorry, Neri. Yeah, we should I could lean back. I could lean back. JR immediately attempts to lean backwards. (laughs) Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Chroma tries to catch them. I'm going to make an acrobatics check. <laughs> By the way, JR is not proficient. Oh, no. Oh. That is a seven. <laughs> um, so how I, much I, bludgeoning I will, damage? I, JR is predictable enough in situations like this that I'm going to say you managed to steady JR. Actually, oh, I'm going to roll it. I'm going to roll an advantage. There we go. The second roll is an 18. You managed to... It's like a trust fall, if you will. (laughs) Okay. JR, we'll make sure you get a recliner. That would be fun. Yes. Yes, it would. Okay. And you continue through the merchant district and the various sights and smells and everything. The city is, it's definitely a mix. Most of the merchant district is clean, but there's areas where it's definitely not. Um, And there doesn't seem to be... Well, the nicer stores seem to have areas clean around them, but they might be right next door to a store that is selling all these discount general goods with a mm-hmm. second sign that says Hollywood Upstairs Medical College is down this alleyway. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And, and that store right next to it is everything's filthy. Um, but you eventually exit the Merchant District and... For a period of time, you're walking down a road where there's some nice-looking older houses. And by older, I mean the foundations look old. They look really, really old. But the buildings on top of them are fairly more recent construction. But right on the other side of the street, you've got warehouses. Ooh, warehouses. And right at the end of the street, you find a small courtyard with a building which you can only assume is the Ogmanite Enclave. In part because... It appears to be, let me check my notes so I can get the wording right. No, those are notes for what I need to do to close out my room for the... (laughs) (laughs) Suddenly we find ourselves in a classroom. Hi, Marwise. (laughs) 
<laughs> I was about to say it. Okay. Uh, this building is paradoxically as stable as it is cobbled together from a wide variety of building materials, designs, and aesthetics. It's also an active development. Some areas have flying buttresses. Others have turrets that are sticking out of the side and over top of other buildings. Some areas have roofs that come to a peak, like an A-frame house. Others, it's curved. Others, it's flat. Others, it's conical. In more than one case, it looks like the roof is on the underside of the structure. Hmm. I sent the opportunity for friendship. <laughs> also, there's a giant plaque on the front door that says Ogmanite Enclave. Oh, Fantastic! Well, Let's go that's, in! That's the right place. And okay. right above the plaque is um, another plaque that's made in bronze, but it has a symbol of an empty scroll on it. There's a lot of white space. Ooh, I can I recognize that. that. Oh, yeah, you'd recognize it instantly because your mentor is Marwise. She worships that god. Yep. Hmm. So do you think we're in the right place? Well, they have a plaque to the god of knowledge. So, yeah. Ogmanite basically means follower of Ogma. (laughs) Well, then, let's knock on the door. Okay. Um, You hear a voice from the inside say, It's unlocked! It's always unlocked! I go in. I'm going to follow. Okay. Yeah, I'll follow. As soon as you enter, you see a Warforge sitting behind a desk on the far side of a very large lobby. (gasps) Hi! It's us! Hi! It's you! Just joking, I remember you. You're the kobolds who came to Mortofu and helped us with the whole uh, unionizing thing. Yeah. And you, you raged against a machine. I did. I still have parts from that thing. You want to see them? No, no, it's okay. That's like saying, (laughs) hey, you want to see a dead body. That, that's very oh, offensive. Right. Yeah. Sorry, didn't realize. Yeah. I mean, you be know, fair, I some of us would like to see that body. too. Uh, well, then, yeah. By the way, this particular Warforged you have encountered before. It's FAQ 9-3. Uh, their official duty in the Warforged Union, the very Terry Pratchett-esque Warforged Union, that as a Union proponent, I am mortified that I invented this thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but their position was Scribe. Okay. 293. We have met before. Oh, good. I'm not the only one who remembers them. How you so doing, What brings Q? you down here? We're checking on you. Ah. And the other Warforged and seeing, you know, if everything's cool. Ah, for Is the most part. everything cool? Well, we're right near the equator, so those of us that have less reliable heat sinks are currently waiting for some refurbishment. But for the most part... Huh, okay. Where's, uh... Well, that's good to hear. Where's everybody else? You're the only well, one here? It's like, I mean, it's almost midnight. I don't think they're nocturnal like us. Oh, okay. Yeah, I keep forgetting but, that other people aren't. I mean, do you, do you sleep? Well, Warforged kind of recharge is not really sleep. Oh, oh that's, okay. that sounds similar. That makes sense. Yeah. But if you're coming, if you're looking for a location where there's still people up, you've come to the right place. I mean, this is an enclave dedicated to knowledge and research. There's people here that are awake all hours of the day. It's why our lobby has a night shift. And I'm on it. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi. hi. <laughs> wow. Okay. You hear a low rumble of thunder, or was that an explosion coming from one of the floors below you? Oh, fascinating. Of course, that interest, Chroma. Well, yeah. It just... I am always interested in advances in the field of making things go boom. Okay, just try to make it so those things don't include us. You know, there's a hey! word for that. There is. There's what? I promise. There's a, there's a word for the field of things that go boom. Demolitions! It's, it's called boomination. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, it's definitely a oh, no. boomination. Dem- demolitions is the field of making things fall down. Boomination is the field of making things go boom. Which could also make them go down or, in many cases, go up. <laughs> And then go back down. That is absolutely correct. You don't hang around Ogmanites without picking up a few things. It's true. Interesting. It's true. So... Well, why don't we head downstairs and see what's up? I mean, so to speak. <laughs> it, I will ask you to sign in, though. We do have a, a little ledger here for that. Oh, of course. Oh, yes. Signing okay. in. Yeah, yeah. Right. And visitor passes. Oh, wow. 
They don't explode, do they? You are not that the first not, person to ask this. That was not in this. character. That was not in character. Yeah, like we already know about we those things. Not, we have not been there, but <laughs> I have. I was debating whether or not Zenosha would know. <laughs> so, uh, I have been asked to inform you that these do not explode, which oh, I think that's is good. That is a very weird thing to be specific about, but I was asked to be specific about it. Thank no, you. No, no, that seems reasonable. It's appreciated. Yeah. Apparently, a large number of the staff that are here spent some time in an academy on the mainland where they have visitor mm, passes yeah. that do explode, and they weren't fans. I heard so, it so they specifically insisted that the design for these not be detonatable. Matter of fact, if you attempt to detonate these, they won't. If you attempt to set them on fire, they will not burn. Oh no, don't Neat. tempt me. If you attempt to tear them, they will not tear. What are they made out of? They sound like you could put a bunch of them together and make some really like, usable armor. They're made out of adamantine. Wow. Adamantine visitor passes. Yeah. Not an item I expected to encounter. They're also very expensive, so if you could return them on your way out, that would be good. Oh yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. You know, it, it it took us about an hour to get here, so why don't we take five minutes to sign in? And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a short break, and we'll come right back with you investigating the Ogmanite Enclave. What's the worst that could happen? We'll find out. <laughs> because will. what happens next will probably be the worst that could happen. I'm pressing yeah. the buttons. We're back mm-hmm. from outer space because you came Definitely. down from the We moon. really are. Yes. You are in a larger gravity well than you were before. We are. One could argue that the moon is in space because it's so far outside of the circulus atmosphere. But at the same time, the moon has an atmosphere. So we are. Let's, let's do this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have your visitor passes that are quite shiny. And you uh, walk up to a door that says down. And when you go through, it's a small room, and the door closes behind you, and there's a bunch of buttons. I They are assume, all numbered. I assume I... Soma is going to push a button. Oh, or, no. or lettered. Some of them have numbers and letters. Some of them have entire words. Some of them have regardless a series of dots of, and dashes. Regardless of what's on them, I assume Chrome is going to push a button. Yeah. Some of them have patterns. Yeah. That one's paisley. Fact, I assume I... Chrome is going to push all the buttons. I should figure out what they do. I should figure out what they do. First Could you scroll of buttons someone? is don't push until you know that none of them are the self-destruct. Um, I don't see how you'd know what any of these do. I have found an accurate Zach, so would you please GIF Chroma of up? Chroma right now. Okay. I go to try to pick up Chroma. Now, last time I tried this, uh, the grapple was contested, so we'll see. I, yeah, I think last time I bit the person who was trying to grapple me. Yes. Yes, I do uh, recall so. uh, that's when we tried to figure out what biting in combat would be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aside from inadvisable. Chroma Depends on if bite. you're on the receiving or giving end. I am not going to bite. It's just sex. Yeah, here, let me get you. I'm going to, like... What are we doing? Moving you away from the buttons. I'm not pushing them! Exactly, because I moved you away. <laughs> I wasn't gonna until I figured out that. Give me perception not checks. Perception checks, okay. Oh no! Bold of you to assume I can give you a perception I've, um, check. I've rolled a twenty, and I have a plus three on perception. Okay. So While you are having this conversation with Chroma, uh-huh. you notice that a very stealthy, as in I rolled an eighteen, a very stealthy Jr is edging towards the buttons. Oh, no. JR, don't do it. Don't do it. I rolled a 12. Neary does, did not notice JR, huh? but... But Zax notices JR. Yeah, don't, but Zax, don't... Zax is engaged currently. Yeah, I'm like, you know, picking up Chroma. I, <laughs> I will interpose myself between 
between JR. Give and me Bobby. a dexterity check to see if you manage to do it. A dexterity check. Yes. Well, you're not trying to avoid damage. Technically, you might be trying to avoid damage. Uh, that's a natural <laughs> twenty plus five is a twenty-five. You, you successfully position yourself between yourself. Well, you don't. You position yourself between yourself. That'd be if you cast mirror image. Um, you successfully <laughs> position yourself between Jr. and the buttons. There is, however, one small problem. I'm pressed JR's got like two buttons. two feet of height versus you. Yeah. Jr. reaches out and presses one of the buttons. Oh no. no! The room starts I'll to close move. my eyes. The room what? The room moves. Why is no, it moving? No, I'm what very I sorry. It, it was a sensation not unlike when the red star is ticking off or landing. Um, and, we're yeah. about not... to get shot out of the ceiling. I have some objections. No, this is down. Oh, oh, okay. Some guy in a top hat and a purple suit coat is saying, there's no earthly way of knowing <laughs> which direction I we are it. going. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, we know. It's down. that's a copyright strike. Actually, yeah. you're not entirely sure. It was a very, very brief moment of motion, like half a second. And then the door opens and you're not in the lobby. Oh, oh that's weird. It moves. I mean, we got that it moves, but... It's um, moving as designed? As a uh, locomotive JR, mechanism right? between floors? JR, anyway, I should go look at that. Do that again? <laughs> Let's go out here and look at what's going on. Um, okay. okay. I'll walk. I'm still carrying Chrome and I'll just walk her out to where she wants to be. <laughs> away from Please the put me down. All right, but don't hit buttons, okay? I wasn't going to. I was saying that I wasn't going to until I knew what they did. Brief span of time between you saying that you, you know, that you're saying you're not going to push them, and then you push them, and we've seen this before, like for years. So no. Oh, okay. I mean, yes, but I yes. was like three. I'm five yeah. now. That's a lot more mature. All right. What do you want to look at out here? I'll go with. Okay, oh, I have you no step idea. out I into just a that since we hallway. were delivered here, we should look. Okay. What do we see? I didn't it's a hallway. No, what, there is a, what do we see? <laughs> there is a gentle curve to the hallway so that you can't see all the way to either end. And there are doors of various shapes and sizes on either side of the hallway. They are not equally spaced. I really want there to be a monorail. 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 I would prefer there not to be a monorail in the hallway. So, well, FYI, is... you're going to really enjoy this source book that I picked up. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with, with that said, uh, you do hear footsteps approaching. Oh, well. Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. The two possible responses. <laughs> I think I recognize that voice. I think I recognize that voice. Huh? And coming around the corner is a stack of papers. Sorry, what? A stack of papers? A stack of papers with legs and hands. And, okay, so there's definitely someone holding a stack of papers, but they are holding a stack of papers that extends up above where their head is. So you basically see a stack of papers with legs. a lot of papers. Yeah, it's uh, research notes. Kevin? Wow. Chroma? Huh? I was right. No. Wow, okay. And you see Kevin's head peek out from around the papers. Oh, hi. Uh, so you're not on more tofu anymore, I guess. Right. Nope. We're here and so are the Warforged. I put my yeah, I noticed. Huh. Some of them got hired. It's pretty cool, considering no one here gets paid. Huh? Well, the, the Ogmanites don't charge fees for helping people, so they don't have any money to pay anyone. Hmm. Come to think of it, I don't think I was getting paid at Nailith Academy either. And they do Where's charge that? tuition. Huh. Uh, Near the Academy, that's on the mainland. Bunch of wizards in a tower that is always as high as it needs to be, which if that's disconcerting to you, you're paying attention. <laughs> that's a little weird, but okay. A tower of holding. <laughs> kind of, sort of, except interdimensional objects actually work. Oh, so I... yeah, yeah. It would be bad if people walked in with a bag of holding and oh. boom, astral plane. Oh. Yeah. That's how you got here. So Who what? That's how you got here. Is the, interdimensional things work? So you must no. have gotten here through an interdimensional thing. No, I got here by boat. I took a boat from Nailith Academy to here. Hmm. Okay. 
All right. So you you got from 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 Martufu to Nail Academy. No, there's still a me there. I think. Thing. There's still what? Did I? There's more than one of you. I thought I explained this last time we met. Oh yeah, you probably did, but also I probably forgot. Okay. Um, can I go put these papers down? Yeah. Do that. Oh yeah, good yeah. idea. Okay. Do that. Follow me. Okay. And he walks a bit further down the hallway, goes over to a door that slides open on its own. You have no idea how much engineering had to go into making doors open up on their own. I might. They don't just have somebody hiding on the other end with a piece of rope? There was some That's how talk. I do it. There was actually some talk about that, uh, wasn't there? Um, and he... Uh, yells further into this room that he's gone into. And now I need to look up the name. Uh, Ms. Mr. Bindle? Shatner? Bindle, what was it that they were going to do with the doors? And you hear a um, a female gnomish voice reply from further inside. Uh, they were going to have automatons inside the doors to, to watch for people and then pull a lever, which seemed a lot of over-engineering, actually. But whatever. Hmm. Eo, for the record, I am very glad that you recognized Kevin's voice. It means that I, someone who can't do accents, have a character voice that people can remember. And uh, coming from, uh, so the, the main room that you walk into when you go through this door from the hallway has a couple small desks and a lot of cabinets. And you presume a few tables, although they're covered with gadgets and gizmos and Many, many stacks of paper. But there is another door on the far end of the smaller room that when it opens up, you see there is a very large space on the inside. Ooh. And there's arcing lightning and stuff going on in there. And a, a gnome with short red hair and goggles that have recently been pushed up to her forehead. And there is the unmistakable marking of like circles around the eyes where the goggles were, almost as if there was some type of particulate that was in the air that the goggles protected the eyes from, but not the rest of the face from. Oh, I know that one. Yes. It is a very unique form of eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't line the eye specifically. It lines around the eye. It looks like you to actually poke yourself when it's applying it. Also, you don't need to apply it. It happens naturally. Fair cop. Hello! Oh, hi. I'm Bindle. Pleased to meet you. I'm Chroma. You two are probably going to get along real good. You yeah. are covered in gadgets. Yes! Do me a favor. Could you reach into your bag of holding real quick? That is a bag of holding, uh -huh. right? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and reach into your bag well, of holding. Mostly it's a belt pouch of holding, but, you know. Okay. When you reach in, it's just a regular belt pouch. Oh, wow. And the space is very large, and we're in an extra-dimensional space right now. Or, oh, heavens I mean, no. If no, we were, no, we'd no. all be in the astral plane. Oh, uh, well, yeah, no. true. But, um, you know, the the other thing that's not quite extra dimensional, but that he was just talking about that the wizard tower does? Oh, no. That just, that's just different? I don't know. I didn't study at all. I'm much more interested in my invention. You want to see it? We can't be in the phlogiston. The what now? Oh, space. If you go far enough out into space, past the crystal sphere boundary, things like bags of holding and such stop working. You and I are going to have to trade a lot of research notes, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yes. Anyway, come check this out. Okay. And and she starts giving you some techno babble about what she's done. I will say that if you make a successful investigation check, that you understand half of the words she says. I won't say that you understand them in context. 22. That's a 22. Okay, so yeah, you make it. You understand a lot of the words. You perhaps would need to understand the context that they're being used in to understand all the logistics. But two words that stick out are interdimensional dampener. Ooh. And you don't hear the rest of what's said after that. I'm going to put my goggles I... down. Because... As, Can I try to understand? You most certainly may. Um, and while you're making Remind that roll... what I'm rolling? Uh, investigation. But it'd be at disadvantage because you have you have not done the training that Chrome has done. Sure. Uh, so <laughs> between an 18 and a 3, that's a 3. Okay. Uh, you know that 
a dampener is kind of like something that you would use in the flu. Yeah. So maybe there's a chimney in here, but that's that's not a chimney. Uh, that's a large sphere embedded halfway into the ground. Oh. Which is also so why a... Chroma doesn't hear any of the words said after interdimensional dampener. So that's that? a special it's fireplace. That? It's that. It's that. It's that. It's that. Oh my gosh. Yes, it's a that. That's my interdimensional dampener. I've seen one of those before. The smile on Bindle's face, which you imagine appears every time she gets to show something off, immediately disappears. You what? You invented another one. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to figure out the thing on the moon for ages, and you you went and put one together. We really need to compare notes. This is amazing. It's duplicable. It's, It's independently duplicable. What's on the moon? One of those th- things. That's all I know. Or it looks like it. it looks okay, like my, hypothesis, my hypothesis is that it's what was keeping the uh, Circulean crystal sphere from opening up. But it doesn't work anymore. Someone broke it. Uh, if I could help. So Was that this Kevin was, saying that? This is Kevin. I think so. So <laughs> I think I know what's happening. Bindle, Miss Brightlight, is very, very smart but likes to use a lot of terminology that you kind of need a degree in to understand all of it. So let's see if this is similar to what you're talking about on the moon. The interdimensional dampener blocks things. So if you've got like an amulet of the planes, if you're close enough to this when it's running, it doesn't work. If you have an extra dimensional space, like a haversack or bag of holding or your belt pouch of holding... It doesn't work when you're in the range of this. We can actually turn this up to cover the whole city if we want. We get yelled at if we do. We haven't done that more than three times. Four. Okay, yes, four times. One of those was an accident, though. Agreed. Okay. And what's really neat about it is I don't have any voices in my head right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that weird for you, though, to not have them? Oh, probably. It is incredibly weird and was very off-putting for the first couple of months, yes. But also, I'm not in anyone else's head right now, either. Is that okay? Oh. This cut you off from the other Kevins. Yeah. It does. So that's why I had to land so far outside the city. You had to do what now? We found a parking space. We found a parking space. Where did you park? Um, landing pad? Yeah. Just Nobody was using it. Pad? Well, it was empty. I mean, you know. Did and we, said that, we said we'd move it uh, if they needed it. Yeah, I mean, we're just holding the spot so when they finish building their spaceship, then they can put it there. We'll move it, you know. But Okay, if you got it sorted, it. you got it sorted. But yeah. a, a lot of the stuff out there is uh, not every ship takes off in the same manner. Some of them need runways. Some of them use magic. Some of them use... Excessive amounts Rocket of tree. Yeah, apparently this planet has a type of alcoholic beverage that's over two hundred percent proof. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we've run into that. I, I, I don't drink that anymore. You drank it? I tried you lived? it once. It was extraordinary, and then uh, I ended up with a slug in my mouth. And listen, I. Ellie, are you mixing I w- characters? I want to be clear that nobody wants a slug in their mouth. So uh, I, I haven't drunk it anymore since then. So are we talking about Gear Grinder Special? Because I think we're talking about Gear Grinder Special. And I that think can we're take talking about Gear Grinder Special. I don't drink it anymore. I tried it once. Not anymore. I um, built a very small rocket once. And I got my hands on a little bit of it and um uh actually I don't want to tell this story. That's yeah, fair. I don't blame you. Gear Grander Special plus rockets. Um I think we can all write the ending to that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Boom. Let, let's put it this way. Uh I am not entirely convinced that that's not how we got to the moon. Oh, I guess it would be rocket. Anyway, Bindle, Brightlight, and Kevin just blink at you a couple times when you say this, and they don't offer any comments 
whatsoever. <laughs> so, parking aside <laughs> and <laughs> experimental failures aside, particularly painful ones, which I assure you I can relate. The DM did give me a backstory already. <laughs> this thing turns stuff off. Did I say that simple enough? I, I can never tell. Yeah, I think I said that yeah. simple I enough. I think okay. I get it. So, that, that's yeah, new. Probably. Okay, I so... new to us. So the device on the moon we're talking about looks a lot like this. And to get outside of what we've been told other plans call the crystal sphere, you have to use some sort of device to open up a hole. And we think what we found on the moon prevents those devices from opening up the holes around our crystal sphere. I great. need to get to the moon. We have a ship that can well, get you there. I could probably bring you with. Yep. You're about the right so I'm size. currently banned from going to that room because for some reason they thought it would be a good idea to let all the inventors in. And when I say inventors, I do not mean artificers. I mean... The inventors who, um, I mean, some of them are becoming artificers, but a lot of them have inventions like scorpion on a stick and jar of green slime and... That's very true, but... Kevin is writing down scorpion... <laughs> Kevin, no. Just, just... I think... Put a note by that that says bad idea. Oh, yeah, I this think is a bad we... idea notebook. Okay. Oh, okay. I we think, only work on these I every think, other Friday. I think if we head back up, we might be able to take a passenger. Right. Um. Now, would this be the same moon that all the Warforged are from? Yep. Right. Uh, kind of. They're not originally well, from there, but they were up there. Oh, yeah. I, I met them on Mortofu. I know. But also, the same moon that they were kicked off of. Yeah, that wasn't us, though. For the crime of not being kobolds. Oh, that's news. Well, that's not how they worded it, but yeah, I'm currently I not think... very easily distracted, so I kind of picked up on the, the subtext. That explains a lot. I mean, half of them. Also, there are eldritch thing. Also, there are eldritch horrors up there. I probably should have mentioned the eldritch horrors before inviting anyone. Oh, well, we killed Would one. You... Hang on. Would you please nominate a representative, and we will head back up. Oh, and have a Marwise. conversation. Marwise. I bet Marwise wants to talk to you. To me? Uh, whoever From... the representative is. I don't know of one I'm Marwise. being clever. And they okay. hung around some very scary people who did dragon yes. worshipping. Yes, they did. Well, what? Uh, uh, less what dragon worshipping. Uh, well, huh? I mean, Bahamut's I mean, I dragons. guess. No, there, um, there, was, there was a kobold with four wings that yelled at us and threatened <laughs> us with an orb. <laughs> Oh, that one. <laughs> oh. We promise... We promise Zeely won't yell at you anymore. If you come with us. Also, she's not there right now. No, she as far as we know. somewhere else, I guess. We promise Zeely won't yell at you if you come with us. <laughs> or I'll make big sad eyes at her. We promise. That work. I tried really the big sad eyes yell. thing. It didn't work. Yeah, but you're not Chroma. She's my mom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or... Chroma promises. <laughs> uh-huh. There are a few Ogmanites here that are studying a thing they call genetics. They might want to talk to you. Huh? We'll do that no, later. No, 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 no. Wonder what that See, is. We're... We'll do that later. We'll do that later. We'll do that later. We'll do that later. Perception checks. Okay. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Perception. I have um, a 10 plus 3 for a 13. So I rolled... Oh, no. goodness. An 11. <laughs> I, yes, I, I, I see that Chroma got a no. That's a zero. You rolled a zero. That's awesome. <laughs> so you rolled a 22. Oh, All right. right. I the 22. So I do get to reveal a plot point, which is good. Uh, right. D1C3 is concerned for our safety. Yeah. But I see a 13 and a 14. Okay, so of these, 14. Roles, of these roles, the only person who notices something right away... Actually, I should probably roll for JR. Oh, yeah. JR has such a good perception. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, seriously, they've got a plus three, which makes their roll a nine. All right. Oh. Yeah. Which is... is they noticed more than Chroma did. 
Chroma uh, is still busy trying to say explain. Almost, they notice almost as much as Neri did. <laughs> With that it's said, like I got a little better. <laughs> Zenosha notices that the ground shakes again. Oh, are you guys experimenting in earthquakes? Uh, nowhere near this floor, I think. Where then we may the want to get out kind of here. The building's kind of non-Euclidean, sort of. It's I don't know it's what weird. that means. Basically, but, okay, I got the, that the elevator. The elevator doesn't always take you in a straight line to get you somewhere the fastest way. Does does Euclidean mean normal? By some definitions of normal, yes. It means Ooh. that it adheres to standards of geometry that um, most things adhere to. And not new, interesting so, standards of geometry. You hear a few screams. So the geometry we goes should sideways. Get out of here this, now. Is, this is bad. We this should is go. not we the should topic of conversation. Someone lead the way, please. I'll try to lead the Where's way. Where's the screams? Are you sure that's wise? Um, I have healing. Towards the screams well, may not be yelling, the best if, idea. If Chroma's yelling towards the screams, Chroma's probably going towards the screams, so I'm going yes. to follow Chroma. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so you go into the hallway, and you run towards the screams, and you see a thing. Bow Is out. it another no? Um, I am opening a book to tell you what you see. Oh, wow. Remember I said I have a new source book. That, that uh-huh. sounds like a no. Yeah, it really does. Okay. So you did see... I roll another zero on perception? <laughs> I am not requiring a roll for perception to head towards the screams and the slamming doors. It was quite obvious. Good. Uh, you Good. see a floating blob. This should be a content warning for this, I think, actually. You see a floating blob of heaving, writhing flesh. It, it, it fills the hallway. It's brushing against both sides of the hallway. The hallway is about 15 feet across. It's a karyotate. <laughs> oh. uh, it has spots that are covered in oozing pus, unidentifiable dark fluids. And, and I am, this is a direct quote from this source book. The odor of a thousand graves. Oh, I have regret. (laughs) I have a lot of regret. Oh, we all have a lot of regrets. My favorite thing is how cheerfully that information was relayed. That is up there with Data saying, I hate this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't know whose experiment that was, but it went really badly wrong. I'm going to guess that we're going to end this. Um. It I would stops. like to roll for initiative. It stops when it sees you. Give me a moment. Huh. Okay. It stops when it sees you. You're assuming it sees you. It definitely stops. Some of the things on it might be eyes. Uh, it keeps changing. Various things appear on the surface and then get absorbed back in. Uh, You're right. Curiotate. Shadite. It's totally a shadite. No curiotate could smell that bad. How often do they bathe? Not often. <laughs> A mouth appears at the end of a pseudopod. This is not like the mouth that you saw the first time you fought a no in Sniv's office. <laughs> this is a, a different design. It grows the mouth. Oh, so you that's see the awful. teeth form. You're right. It. Say that. <laughs> and it says, it hurts us. We will stop it. And then oh, it surges forward. You're from another dimension. Time for murder. Yep. And yep. that, as I slam my book shut with the bookmark in place, end it. is where we're going to end it for this evening. Oh, my gosh. Because let's face it, we've been playing for almost yeah, two hours. We are not hours. starting combat. No, no. <laughs> we, are, we are not right starting combat at 11 o'clock yeah. at night. <laughs> no, not not a good thing. No, and there's no way I'd remember initiative order from one week to the next. Yeah, so, so next time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for playing. <laughs> thank you. For these wonderful gifs <laughs> that are, I, yeah. I'm not really a SpongeBob person, but that's SpongeBob gif. <laughs> Ooh, 17. So, so lovely. Uh, tonight, I've been joined by a bunch of incredibly awesome people, including LFA and Archbeth in various chats. We were joined with players Ellie, Eo, Jen, Matt, and Cindy. Wait, I was here? <laughs> well, we were all here, which means we weren't all there. And that joke will I'm never not never be I'm never all there. So let's do a few quick plugs. Ellie runs a social network 
It is Mastodon compatible. Elec.xyz, E-L-E-K-K.xyz. We do not provide also, pressures. I got I gotta call out. I got to call out to my hair plugs just to let everybody know. Also the AC plugs. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's the U.S. It style, now. not the European style. Yeah. Okay. If you're in Europe, no AC plugs for you. You can get an adapter, but make sure you're using the right voltage. Huh. Yeah. But in any case, many of us have social network info that we're willing to share. And that information is available on the cast page in the show notes. Eo's mom writes books. You can get those at elizabeth-mccoy.com. Jen has a blog and podcast. You can get that wonderful, cool stuff at bookofjen.net. And Matt's brother-in-law also writes books, and you can get those at nogospelforus.com. And until next time, this is Crash saying... <laughs> and content warning. Sorry. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. Good night.